Hi everyone, this is Mrs. V Chen. Welcome to my Form Five Business Lesson One. And today is thirteenth of February two thousand twenty, and I'm going to explain to you some of the ideas and concepts of Chapter Three, and which is sources of financing. Okay. So to begin with, let's look at the meaning and definition of financing. And here is to provide fund for an enterprise, or to provide fund for a business or for a firm. All right, so I always need money to pay salary to my employees, right? And also, I need money to pay rent. What about if I do not have enough money to pay those expenses? However, I need to keep running my business. So in that case, I need to find sources. Okay, where to get money? Are you okay? So this is the meaning of sources of financing. All right. So how many ways are there altogether? All right. So you can refer to your handouts. Now this is chapter three, and then you can do this. You can highlight the first part, which is short-term financing and long-term financing. So this is part one. Okay, and after that, you can go to I think that is page three of your handouts. You can highlight part two: equity financing and debt financing. All right, and finally you can go to handout, which is the last page. You can highlight. Third, internal financing and external financing. Are you okay? All right. So mainly in this chapter, we are going to have three big things in this chapter, and then I'm going to explain to you step by step about each one of them. Okay. So the first part we have short term financing and long term financing. Okay. So not enough money. What can I do? I can go to the bank. To borrow money. Okay, so let me use double entry to explain to you. So therefore, after borrowing money, I have more money in my bank account. So I debit bank accounts and credit bank loan. All right. So do you remember what is a credit thing in the statement of financial position? It means liabilities. Okay. So we owe people money. We owe the bank money, right? But however, there are two kinds of liabilities. Do you remember? Okay, so which one means we have to pay in the near future, and which one means we don't need to pay in the near future? So if it is current liabilities, that means we have to pay in the near future. So therefore, obviously, this will be a kind of short-term financing. Okay, so why short-term financing? Because current liabilities means we need to pay. In the near future. So how near is that? Remember, which is less than one year. All right. So what about when we have this bank loan? However, we don't need to pay in the near future. We can pay later than one year. So that would be non-current liabilities. So therefore, this non-current liabilities will be what? Will be a kind of long-term financing. Okay. So this is the. First big area: short-term financing and long-term financing. Okay, all right.、Mm. Now we come to the second part: equity financing and debt financing. All right. So to explain this, we go back to accounting equation. So A stands for assets, right? And assets is always equals to capital plus liability. So now look at capital. So we call this capital, all right. And why capital? Capital means the money introduced by the owner. Do you still remember the accounting you have learned in Form Four? All right. Okay. And if it is not a sole proprietorship, however, for a public limited company, okay. Therefore, we don't call it capital. We change the name to share capital. So in that situation, there is also another name replacing capital, and then we call that equity. Are you okay? So capital is same as equity when this is a limited company. Are you okay? So here, so share capital is same as equity when we have limited company. All right. So that limited company can always issue shares. So this is. The double entry after issuing shares, 
So the double entry is debit bank and credit share capital. So in that case, this way of financing is called the equity financing. Are you okay? All right, so after equity financing, and then we look at debts financing. So what is the meaning of debts here? Debt is exactly the same as liabilities. Okay, so in the previous example, we borrow money from the bank. Okay, so what about if we have to pay in the near future? So that means this is also a kind of short-term financing. So therefore, borrowing money from the bank can be also classified as short-term financing and long-term or long-term financing or debt financing. When it is talking about liabilities, which is same as debt financing. Okay? All right, and don't worry about the detail. I will come back to the detail later. All right, and then finally, uh, no, before we go to part three, we can now look at the detail. All right, we can now look at the detail for short-term financing and long-term financing. All right, so you can do this for me. If you refer to your handout, okay, you can give me another color, use another color to highlight how many of them do we have for short-term financing. So there are commercial paper, so there are short-term bank loans, accrued expenses, and trade credits, and factoring. Factoring, sorry, factoring, okay. So what I need to do next, I need to explain to you some of the technical terms. Now, okay, so there are five ways for short-term financing. Okay, so just now we have talked about this already, short-term bank loans, are you okay? All right, and now accrued expenses. Let me explain this to you, all right? Okay, for example, so what about pay rents for eight months? All right, so again, I use double entry to explain to you. So pay rent for eight months and look at rents. Rent is always a kind of expenses in the profit and loss account. So with that big profit and loss account, and I put rent here. Okay, and remember, whenever we do profit and loss, we do income statements. So how long will be the income statement? The income statement will be always last for 12 months, which is a year. Is that right? Okay, but however, we only pay how much here? Eight months, so I credit bank. All right, and that is eight months. So eight months, okay, so let me let me put example here. If I say 10,000 will be the rent per month. All right, so therefore 12 months will be, let me change that, okay, let me change that. So 12 months will be 12, right, 12 months. 12 and then I add 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Am I right? Yes, okay. However, we only pay 8 months, so that will be 80,000 pay. Are you okay? So do you remember which accounting concept we follow here? So the profit and loss account is always accrual-based. Accrual-based. That means the rent here is always the rent incurred it. Okay, if you go back and study the accounting concept of a cooler concept, all right, so this will be the explanation. So incur the rent, so 12 months, which is one year. However, we only pay how much? 80,000 for eight months. So obviously you can see the amount we pay is not enough. So therefore I need to add something on the smaller side and the smaller side is the credit side. Okay, so that, and we owe people how much? So 40,000, am I right? And then this 40,000 is equivalent to how many months rent? That must be four months rent, four months rent. Are you okay? And then we give a name and this is new to you. Okay, we call this accrued expenses. Okay, since we owe people, 40,000. What kind of people? 
we owe our landlords. All right, so we owe people four months rent, and that is the landlord. So that you can see, we create something on credit side and we give the name, which is accrued expenses. All right, and what do you think about this credit item? This credit item will be a kind of current liabilities. Okay, so this is the idea of accrued expenses, saying that we owe people something. All right, and then we are going to pay later. So this is an, another, another kind of sources of financing. So are you okay for that? All right, so this is number three, accrued expenses. Now we come to number four here. Number four here is trade credit. So what is the meaning of trade credit? So very often we need to buy goods from supplier. So what happens if we buy goods from supplier? So what would be the double entry if we pay later? So that would be same as credits, purchases. Do you remember this? We buy goods from supplier and pay later. So that would be credit purchases. So what is the double entry? Okay, so purchases is always a debit item. So we debit purchases since we pay no money yet. Do you remember these suppliers will be our creditors? And creditor is same as trade payable. Do you all remember this that you have learned in Form 4? Okay, look at this credit again. What is credit? Credit means excess or liability. Credit means liability. Since this is short-term financing, we have to pay in the near future. Now we have another what? We have another current liability. So, so the idea of current liabilities is similar to short-term financing. So therefore, this is trade. the meaning of trade credits. Are you okay? All right, so finally, this is, now finally we come to factoring, all right? So to explain factoring, uh, let me draw you picture. Let me draw you a diagram and show you step by step factoring. Okay, actually, um, factoring comes from the idea of credits sales. Okay, so do you remember what is mean in credit sales? Credit sales means we sell goods to customer, however, with no money received yet. Okay, let's do a double entry for that. So sales is always a credit item, so our credit sales. Since we have no money received yet, so who owes us money? So debtors owe us money. And there is another name for that is we call that trade receivable. Okay, for example, let's say if we have made credit sales 10,000 and then 10,000. This is example. And trade receivable means we have no money received yet. Okay, and we are going to receive money later. Okay, but now since we need money to run our business and then we can't wait for the debtors to pay us money. So what can we do? Okay, we can sell this trade receivable to a third party. Okay, and that is the idea of factory. All right, so transfer trade receivable to a third parties. All right, so the double entry i show you. So if we transfer trade receivable to a third party, look at this. Now we cancel debtors. We cancel trade receivable, which is 10,000. All right, since we transfer this to third party, we are going to receive money, debit bank, from third party. Okay, now the point is here. So since we can enjoy receiving the money earlier, However, to pass this to a third party later. And what do you think? So when we receive from third party, it must be third party, party. It must be less than 10,000. For example, we, we can only receive 7,000. This is fair. Huh? So we receive less because we don't want to wait. Are you okay? So what do you think about the difference here? I put debit, I put 3,000 here. And then this will be a kind of costs 
or expenses or costs or in the profit and loss account for enjoying money earlier and pass this trade receivable to the third party and later on the third party is going to ask for the debtors to pay them money so this is the meaning of factoring all right so after short-term financing you can go to page two of your handouts and now you give me a highlight for long-term financing we have issuing stock issuing bonds long-term bank loans retained profits and high purchase and leasing all right so now let me explain to you the detail for each one of them all right okay so long-term financing the first one so issuing stock and stock here is same as issuing shares okay so do you remember this for issuing shares so we debit bank and credit share capital okay so this happened to what this happened to a big company a limited company okay so let's go back to this look debit bank credit share capital and actually this double entry is same as issuing stock and same as issuing shares all right so therefore this example is classified as as not only long-term financing but also what but also equity financing okay so why we issue shares because we need money from the shareholders okay and the name is same as equity okay so whenever we issue shares the company the company has to pay dividend to the shareholders and i will go back to this point later all right so therefore issuing stock issuing shares is not only long-term financing but also what a kind of equity financing okay all right so what's next What's next for long-term financing? It would be issuing bonds. So similarly, let me write down again, issuing bonds. And there is another term for bonds, which is the ventures. Okay, so double entry is debit bank and credit, for example, 5% bonds or the benches. Okay, now look at this credit thing. Credit means liabilities. Okay, and liabilities since and this is a long term one, so this is also same as non current liabilities. And also, and also, this is a kind of what? This is a kind of debts financing okay so this is a kind of debt financing so to look at the details for debt financing the firm can borrow money from the bank we have mentioned this before and also the firm can issue bonds here if it is limited company the firm can issue bonds to the bondholders so you can see the double entry is exactly the same therefore what is issuing bonds Issuing bonds is classified as a long-term financing, not only that, but also what? But also debt financing. Okay, and this equity financing, debt financing is also part two sources of financing in this chapter. All right, okay. And next, for long-term financing, which is long-term bank loans. I know we have talked about this before. Okay, and now we come to four. Okay, so therefore issuing stock, same as issuing shares, is a kind of long-term financing. Not only that, and it is also a kind of equity financing. So similarly, issuing bonds, same as issuing debentures, 
is a kind of long-term financing, not only debt, but also a kind of debt financing. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to explain to you is retained profits. So these retained profits happen to limited company. All right, so whenever you make profits for limited company, limited company has to pay dividend to shareholders. All right, so what about if I pay less dividend to shareholders because I need money in the business for future use? For example, why we need money? We may have expansion of business. Okay, we want to have uh, other branches so that to increase market share, we need money, right, for expansion. Or we may want to take over another business. We need money as well. Okay, or we want to do better. We want to spend more money on R&D. What is R&D? Research on development. So therefore we need money, right? So therefore we pay less dividend. So the idea is called retained profits. And this is also a kind of internal financing. All right, and part three in this chapter is about internal financing and external financing. And this is the um, good example for internal financing, which is retained profit. So retained profit is a kind of long-term financing as well as internal financing. Okay, now we come to the final example under long-term financing, and which is high, pur high purchasing and leasing. All right, in the old time, it is very common for students to do photocopying to get their teaching materials and notes, things like that. So if I want to earn a living, so I can open my photocopying shop, and then I need to buy photocopying machine, and actually, which is not cheap, which is quite expensive. And there are two ways for me to do financing on this photocopying machine. All right, if I do this under high purchasing, so I just pay rent to the supplier of the photocopying machine regularly. And then at the end of the last installment, I get ownership for this photocopying machine. That means I own this photocopying machine. Then this way of financing is called high purchasing. Okay, so what about if I don't want to own this photocopying machine? All right, so I just pay rent regularly to the photocopying machine of the supplier, and then we call that leasing. Okay, so after explanation of the difference between short-term financing and long-term financing, now we go back to equity financing and debt financing. So for equity financing, we have this, that is the limited company can issue shares and we call that equity financing, all right? And the limited company can issue bonds, so we call that debt financing, okay? And debt financing is also a kind of long-term liabilities. Now, we need to do comparison between this equity financing and debt financing. All right, so right after we have bonds issued to the bondholders, okay, you can see there comes a percentage. And do you know what is the meaning of this percentage? This percentage means the interest rates. Okay, that means whenever we issue bonds, we must pay interests. All right, so look at the double entry for interests. So we debit profit and loss in the income statements and name it as finance costs. And then we need to pay interest, so credit bank, right? So what is the meaning of this finance cost and a debit item in the income statement? It is a kind of expenses. So therefore, after this double entry, our expenses will be getting bigger. Net profit is getting smaller. So if we earn less net profit, Therefore, we should pay more tax or less tax to government. We pay less tax to government. So therefore, we can say whenever we issue bonds, which is debt financing, all right, we can pay less taxation. So that we say issuing bonds or borrow, borrowing money from the bank is a kind of tax deductible. What do you think? This is advantages or disadvantages? tax deductible, we pay less tax to government. So it will be advantages, one of the advantages for issuing bonds. Okay, 
make comparison, go back to equity, share capital, when we issue shares. Whenever we issue shares, we need to pay dividend to shareholders. But however, in the income statements, this dividend is not a kind of expenses. So expenses will not be affected by dividend and net profit will not be affected. So therefore, we say this is non-tax deductible. Therefore, what do you think? This is this advantage. One of the disadvantages for issuing shares, and which is equity financing. And this is just opposite to the advantages of issuing bonds. Okay, so finally, after short-term financing and long-term financing, and also equity financing and debt financing, now the final, final part will be internal financing and external financing. So you have the meaning of internal financing, means that funds are obtained from the firms internally, generated cash flows. So while external financing means that funds are obtained from sources outside the firm. So obviously the one doing internally, the good example will be retained profits. So retained profit is a kind of internal financing. And also remember, long-term financing. Okay, and that's it about the very basic idea and concept of chapter three sources of financing. So thanks for watching my video. And then I will see you next time. Bye-bye.